Ladies and gentlemen, good, a pleasant good evening to everybody. How is everybody doing tonight? It is your boy Lewis once again back with you with another live stream coming at you once again on this wonderful Friday evening with another banger with yet another video on this warm Friday night. You guys already know the deal. Make sure you smash that like button. Make sure you hit that subscribe button as you come in on the Lewis Sports Network. As you can see, I also changed my uh, profile pick uh, just to try to show you that I appreciate all the players in the game, no matter in moments where how I feel about them at times. You try to be objective, even though some people are not going to like some of the some of the things you say. But again, make sure you smash that like button, hit that subscribe button, make sure your notifications are turned off for the Lewis Sports Network as you guys come in. And again, share this on your social media all over and make sure to share this on Reddit. Truly appreciate it. Truly appreciate it. Thank you. All right. So let me just see who is in the chat. Let me see how we get started. Man, I said we was going to start at eight. Uh, I do apologize, ladies and gentlemen. It's just what happened was is that, again, I had Internet issues and I'm trying to get the, trying to get this whole thing fixed. Got some things canceled and then, um, you know, was able to try to see if now the Internet is supposed to be a little bit faster now. So I'm going to just wait and see if that's you know, able to work. So I'm going to see if that, you know, works. But again, shout out to the Mont. And like I said, shout out to new people who happen to come in for this story. And I thought it was an interesting story. And also, once again, ladies and gentlemen, I was going to come with the Shaq and Kobe video with how Shaq and Kobe is just a false narrative and a false myth. But I'll leave that for next week because I wanted to talk about Scottie Pippen and Reggie Miller. So I'm coming back with a back to back video. So make sure you are tuned for that one. And I want everybody to pull up with that one because I, I think the conversation between these two players for the last two days has been actually red hot. And I thought it was something that we need to bring up between who's the better player, Scottie Pippen or Reggie Miller. And, you know, we got to talk about and debunk some narratives out here. So, again, smash the like button. Hit the subscribe button for the Loose Sports Network, man. Everybody, welcome. Let's get it. <clears throat> We're about to get in. I thought I missed it. I had to leave. I had to leave and just came back. I thought you guys would have been done by now. That's my favorite committee. <laughs> yeah, boy. Shout out to Layla and shout out to Ryan in the chat i was in the chat but i had to drop on my knees off and of course it took like two hours ryan says for the longest time i was searching hard for later on the stream i'm like who the hell is this and that's crazy all right shout out to joel hayward he says what up he says ready for the stream ryan shout out to the lowly one salute let's get it shout out uh so you got stuck for a second let me see uh, let me just check something really quick for a second, you guys. There we go. Just wanted to put a stop to that. Shout out to Rock Cowan in the building. He says, what up? Shout out to Layla, who says, also, I'm Layla, right? I don't know what everyone started calling me by name. Shout out to Jermaine. Shout out to Jermaine Grantham. He says, what's good, sir? Salute. Uh, shout out to you, Jermaine. Don't know if you knew, but uh, appreciate you coming through, man. And make sure to smash the like and hit the subscribe. Unless if I do know you, uh, so unless you change your name or something, but first time I'm seeing you, but if I do know you, my apologies, but shout out to Anthony L. Ryan says, my phone keeps heating up. I think that's why my battery keeps going low and hard to charge. All right, shout out to Anthony. <clears throat> Layla, all right, what up, Anthony? All right, what's up, everybody? Let's get started on this story that we have right now. All right, we already got 13 people liking the video. That's what's up. Again, shout out to the mods. All right, so let's get into it. Uh, so obviously this is the last dance. Uh, and again, shout out to the only one. Uh, you know, we're talking about the Chicago Bulls and the historic 98 season, and it's obviously gone back and forth as to, you know, from Jordan's snippets of Jordan's beginning, and it goes all the way uh, to the 98 season, but it keeps showing you the 98 season on top of that because that was the main focus. But I want to focus on this uh, New Jersey Nets story with Kerry Kittles, Kendall Gill, and John Calipari. The reason I brought three, these three gentlemen up <clears throat> is because Kerry Kittles was on the Odd Couple yesterday, and he was talking to he was talking to um, Chris and Rob, and basically talking about you know their the ninety eight series and you know basically what happened, and basically Kerry Kittles had some things to say that he feels like. He talks about the greatness of Michael Jordan. He talks about how special Michael has been pretty much in NBA history, what he meant for pe for the people who he played with and against. And he says something very interesting. He said that he feels like that this documentary 
has been about pretty much not really telling people how great Michael Jordan is when it comes to his game. It's been about a lot of the inside the scenes and behind the scenes. And he says, I've been watching for a while, but I finally decided to hit you up during the live stream. All right, cool. Um, I appreciate that, Jermaine. And uh, make sure to let know, others know about the channel. And uh, again, guys, make sure to smash the like and make sure to hit the subscribe. And again, shout out to Jermaine Graham uh, for, you know, taking the time to, you know, to watch the video. Appreciate it. Th appreciate it very much. Um, so like I was saying, uh, Kerry Kittles was basically talking about how he feels like that the last dance is talking about his gambling issues. It's talked about how horrible teammate he was. And it's a perfect picture of Jeffrey because he looks younger than he does now. Right, Layla? And look at his eyes. Look at those eyes. And there's Kendall Gill right there in the picture. As Jordan is about to dunk, there's Kerry Kittles right there on the bottom. And then there's Scottie Pippen right there under the basket, right next to Kerry Kittles, where Jordan's about to dunk the basketball, right? So Kerry Kittles says that he feels like that they're kind of depicting at the fact that all they're really showing is that they're just showing Jordan, you know, obviously with what's going on behind the scenes, but they're not showing you the beauty of his game. They're not showing you that. Like they're not showing you the fundamentals. They're not showing you the details. They feel like that they're leaving that part out. And I, I, they feel like it's in a way that obviously the producers of this video, of this documentary, is only depicting things for people to kind of pick out, you know, try to be nitpicking some things about him to the point that just like, you know what? It's like, because if you look at it, look who's spoken out. Horace Grant, Craig Hodges, uh, Isaiah Thomas, uh, and... They focus all on all pretty much on the controversial stuff, which in one which which in one sense I understand. I understand. I understand in a sense because you want to find out the truth. You don't want the narratives. You want to say, well, what that what is that person really hiding, right? But it's true. They don't really focus on what's making Michael great. It's funny because Phil Jackson has talked about the triangle offense. Steve Kerr's about to talked about the triangle. Dennis Rodman talks about the triangle. You know, they talked about that. And it's, um, I'm wondering also, why do, why isn't that they look at Jordan's game to show you that that dude was that, that dude was that dude, man. And it's crazy to me how they just really just focus on that, but they don't want to really show, again, what makes Jordan great. I mean, this dude practiced a lot of the fundamentals, man, that made him special. So that's what they, uh, that's what they should also do. So if they're going to show all of these things in the documentary and showing the way that Michael Jordan is, obviously, of course, you know, you want to see all that, but at the same time, you want to do that as well though. And he was about that soul, right? And uh, Kerry Kittle says that he feels like it's a shame that we're not getting to see all the other parts and we're focusing on all the other things and focusing on about Scottie Pippen and all this and that. And like I said, make sure you guys come back for the Scottie Pippen versus Reggie Miller video. I want to do that because I want you, I want to show you guys a lot of things that have happened in the last two days between those two. And I think that once we get to that, it gets really, really, really dicey. Again, smash the like button, hit the subscribe button for the Lewis Sports Network. As you see, your boys, the 1998 champs, Jordan and Pippen sitting side by side. You got the bottles of champagne right there, side to side right there. Let's get to the article. So I'm trying to get the article with Kerry Kittles, but the problem is it only shows the video where he's on the show. I'm trying to see if I can find the video. Um, but let me get to Kendall Gill. Well, first, let me get to John Calipari. So as you guys know, John Calipari recalls Michael Jordan calling shot on Kerry Kittles in the playoffs. So it says the story of George Call riling up Michael Jordan by ignoring him as a restaurant at a restaurant told in the last dance reminded John Calipari of his own days sparring with Jordan at the NBA level. Calipari coached the New Jersey Nets for three seasons, including the Bulls' last dance campaign of 97-98, uh, which tells me he came in the 95-96 season. The Bulls and the Nets squared off in the first round of the playoffs that year, and though the Nets played the Bulls closer than many expected, especially in game one, I would say games one and three, Jordan averaged 36.3 points per game across a three-game sweep. Zilch, zip, nada. In that series, Calipari did all he could to avoid being the victim of a tale like George Carl. But as he recalled on an episode of ESPN's Coffee with Cal, it, it was already too late. So Calipari reminisces the time that Jordan pretty much stared him down and pretty much gave him problems on, you know, how much life, how much life of hell he was going to give, you know, his player. And before I continue, fatalities, 
Uh, Freddie Gee, shout out to Freddie Gee. What's good, Lou? In the chat, just popping in to show some love because the wife's birthday is today. Oh, happy birthday. Happy birthday to the wifey, uh, Freddie. That's what's up, man. I uh, hope you guys enjoy. No, uh, no doubt. Uh, hope you guys enjoy, man. You and the wifey deserve it. That's, that's awesome. Uh, congratulations to you guys. And, uh, you know, live it up, man. Don't do too much in this quarantine. Got to stay safe out here. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. Like my man Drake says, dirty, dirty. Wish you know me. <laughs> But don't let her air my dirty pictures and dirty laundry. Mm. Nah, I'm just playing, man. But happy birthday, my happy birthday to your wife, my guy. Shout out to six foot two hundred, man. He says uh, he's a psychopath. That's how I became Buck. But if you Van get pat those traits, I'm a great heartfelt person, man. Do you want to be on my team? Hmm. I see. Well, we wish a happy birthday, though. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. As we continue. So Calipari basically says, for me, when he came up to me and we were in a timeout, I wasn't saying shit to this guy. There's not a word I'm saying, Calipari, Calipari said on the show. And when I walked away and he followed me, I'm not saying anything. So I turned around and I looked at Nets assistant coach, Keddie Gadsden, and I said, is he still here? Because again, if you made this dude mad, I mean, Jordan was indeed still standing behind Calipari staring daggers into his back. In other words, Jordan was kind of kind of undressing Calipari with his eyes, man, behind his back. Chill. He looked at me and went like this, makes a zero sound with his hand. Calipari continued. And I looked away from him. And I looked at Kenny Gat and I say, is he looking at me? So I look back up at him. And he was like that, makes a zero sound again. And I go, Kenny, what's he talking about? Kenny said, oh, I don't think he's going to let Kerry Kittle score. So Gattinson's instincts were correct. That's how much of a sociopath Michael Jordan was. I mean, the man was staring behind the damn coach, man. Really? That's crazy. (laughs) Oh. Oh, too late. Hey, you put it on there, man. You put it on there. Did I miss something? Nope, didn't miss anything. All right. Oh, yeah, that, yeah that'll never change. Yeah, that definitely for sure. <laughs> That's a definite fact. That's a definite fact. We know that for sure. All right, so continuing, um, where is that article? There's Calipari. He says he went from not guarding to saying, I'm shutting it. Calipari said, that dude has something special inside of him on both sides of the ball because obviously Jordan was a two-way player. Kittles had a fine enough series overall, but in game one, he only scored three, 10 points on three of 17 from the field. Field, excuse me, Ned, Sam Cassell, Keith Van Horman, Sherman Douglas to offer his perspective on the matchup. He was Michael. He had the ability to flip the switch whenever he wanted on either side of the court, Kerry Kittle said. There we go. I caught the brunt of it as a young player in the league where I had it going one night in the first half, and then he switched on me in the second half, and I don't think I scored a bucket in the second half. That was Michael in a nutshell. Kerry Kittles was a good, solid player, but he really was just more than just a good, solid player. That's that's honestly, you know, it, you know he had a good, solid pro career. He right now is work, he's with Villanova now. Wait, is he with the Villanova? Let me just check. I know he's from Villanova. That's a fact. Wow. Layla says, stop it, gentlemen. Go easy. Congrats to the first lady. <laughs> Freddie, my guy. <laughs> you make it sound like Freddie's the president. <laughs> yeah, just be saying suspect, man. Talking all that alpha shit, man. You got to bring her on sometime, Freddie. Tell her there's a girl in here, man. Now go celebrate her. Yo, for real. All right. I mean, hey. We can, uh, let me click that right there. They go to Sam Cassell, one of my favorite point guards because the man was a clutch player. Dude showed up in big moments, so I appreciate Sam I am. She don't F with no sports. I see. I see. That's okay. As long as I can cheat with MJ, you can cheat with Kobe. Oh, wow. She said, raw, raw, raw. All right, 
right, so Kerry Kittles basically said, continuing, uh, Kittles and Cal were not Jordan's first victims, obviously. Jordan looks at you like he's Goldberg. He just looks at you as another victim. Basically, Jordan's just looking at you and like, who's next? Who's next? No, we're the last. See BJ Armstrong in the next round, all in a day's work. Now, smash the like button, hit the subscribe button. Let's get to my main man, Kendall Gill. So Kendall Gill was a very good NBA player, ladies and gentlemen. Shout out to G Money. Again, smash the like button, hit the subscribe button for the Lewis Sports Network. We got nine people showing. Hopefully, let's get more views up. We got 14 likes. Let's get to my main man, because I said I got to do that Scottie Pippen, Reggie Miller stuff. Oh, wow, look at that. <laughs> this is Thomas on the side. All right, as I'm continuing, so we got Kendall Gill. There he is guarding the man, MJ. Right there, 96, 97. Let me put my main man right there. They go Kendall Gill. Y'all remember Kendall Gill? There goes D. Rose and goes against Zach Levine up in here. All right, so continue to hit the smash and hit that subscribe. All right, so Kerry Kittles is with Princeton right now. There he goes right now. Currently, that's Kerry Kittles currently right now. But let's get to my main man, Kendall Gill. Anyway, Kendall Gill. There's an article about him. And basically talks about he responds to Michael's slight at the 98 Nets. Basically, what Jordan said in this art in this article and what he told the Nets was he said that the only chance that they're giving up a game is that they fall asleep or possibly give up the series. But I said that the Bulls were a better team than the Nets at the time. So it made sense. It made sense that he wasn't gonna be, you know, that they was probably gonna fall asleep just for the Nets, but it's like you almost gave up game one. And that wouldn't have been a good look. You know, had that happened. Smash the like, hit that subscribe. Continuing with the article, it says, and I quote, going to the article. The seventh installment of ESPN's docuseries on the 97-98 Bulls at the last dance highlighted the first round matchup between the Shy Bulls and the Calipari-led Nets. Correct? Correct, Amundo. Among the highlights from that season, using the episode was a clip of the ESPN anchor Brian Kenny quoted Michael Jordan saying, Michael actually said to lose a game to the Nets, his team would have to fall asleep. The Nets gave the Bulls a scare in game one, but Chicago ultimately prevailed and won the opening contest of the series 96-93. The Bulls would go on to win the series in three games and route to another NBA title, their sixth NBA championship in franchise history, sixth title in eight years they dominated the 90s. Former Nets wing... Kendall Gill remembers how the Nets almost got the better of Chicago in game one. He had something to say about Jordan's comment when he appeared on WFAN's Joe and Evan on Monday. He goes, you know, game one, we almost caught him. They were taking a nap, but they woke up at the end. With the team being so young, I don't think Kerry Kittles and Keith Van Horn really knew any better. They were like, we're just playing basketball. They didn't really realize we were playing the Chicago Bulls dynasty. So he continues and basically says the retired net also recalled the play in the final minute of overtime in game one when the score was 91-91 and Jordan picked Kerry Kittle's pocket, then scored on a fast break and went to the line after Gill tried to stop him. That was when he did the dunk and a foul in overtime. So he says, that's why I'm still mad at Kerry Kittle's because he didn't run the play he was supposed to run. Coming out of the huddle, Calipari draws up a play. All right, Kerry, you're going to get the ball. Michael, Michael Jordan's on you. Swing the ball to Kendall, who had Tony Kukoc on him, and just let Kendall take him one-on-one. -on -one. What does Gary Kittles decide to do? He decides to try to take Michael Jordan by himself. Now, give Gary Kittles credit. I mean, the man displays some confidence, so you got to give him some props. I understand that. Gary Kittles didn't back down. But if you try to run the play, She goes, oh, Freddie, that's the street. Use asterisk here, preacher's daughter. D Rose is my next best Chicago Bulls player after MJ. Been way too long that I remember Kendall Gill. Me too, Ryan. Facts. Uh, I dream, I move, I dream, I grew like Mike. Smash, smash that like. Wow. Amazing. As I keep going, ladies and gentlemen, so it shows. Getting back to Kendall Gill. 
So Michael steals the basketball and he's got like three or four steps on me. But I really think that I can catch him because I had success against Michael guarding him, blocking his shots and things like that. Not on the fast break, but blocking his jump shot and everything. But I still thought that I had an opportunity to get it, at least get him or at least get to the ball. And it was the last seconds of the game. It was a key play. The only thing that was he jumped before. And unfortunately, I fouled him. And here I am. What? 22 years later, still having to answer questions about that. Anytime my brother wants to shut me up, he sends me that play. Damn. Damn, Kendall, he had to do it to you like that? Bro. That's crazy. Bro. Kendall Gill had to pretty much do it like that. Kerry Kittles tried to take MJ one-on-one. Like, bro, you can't be serious, man. Jordan said he was going to score zero. Kerry Kittles actually started... uh, no, Kendall Gill played for the Bulls. He did play for the Bulls, but he was a New Jersey net. Well, no, there's Kerry Kittles right there being sandwiched in between Scottie Pippen and Michael Jordan right there. There's Kendall Gill. This was the 96-97 season right there. Why he looking like he about to lick MJ's head, though? He a little too close for my liking on defense right there, yo. Like, he look like he about to... Trying to find a good spot to lick his damn lick his damn ball head. Like, chill, chill, bro. Like Ryan said, live Ron Simmons. Damn. Damn. Smash the like, hit that subscribe. Um, yeah, Kobe tortured Kerry Kittles too in the O2 finals. I mean, the thing is, Kerry Kittles, he's a solid defender, but it's like, yo, when you when you compare him to those two in terms of skill set. You, you can't compete with that. You obviously cannot compete with that. That's just too much. That's too much. Uh, with Kendall Gill, he was a solid defender. He led the league in steals in the lockout season in 98-99. Kendall Gill played for eight teams in the NBA in his career. Career 13 points, Four rebounds, three assists. The man is from Illinois. He was a fifth overall pick by the Hornets in the 1990 NBA draft. 75% free throw shooter, 30% three-point shooter, 43% from the field, which tells you he was a volume scorer and not that much of a shooter. He played multiple positions. He was a shooting guard and a small forward, so he could play both positions. He's a multifaceted wing. Uh, His best season was in the 96-97 season where he averaged 21 points, shot, played all 82 games, started 81 of them. He shot 44% from the field, 33% from three. 33% from three. I'm trying to find the stat. Where am I? Because you could get lost in this this crap. Oh, there we go. And he shot 79% from the free throw line. Uh, Six rebounds, four assists, 1.9 steals. Uh, That was Kendall Gill's best season. He had two seasons averaging 20 points per game. Uh, It says right here, so he started with the Charlotte Hornets, three seasons with them, two seasons with Seattle. Uh, He played with the Hornets. Oh, he got traded back to the Hornets and the Nets. Uh, He only played 47 games that season. Uh, He played four seasons, five, no, actually, no, he played one, two, three, four, five, six seasons with the Nets. He went to the Miami Heat in 2002, uh, went to Minnesota in 2003, went back to the Bulls in 2004, and then he played with the Milwaukee Bucks in 2005, but he only played 14 games that season and ended up retiring. Uh, If you look at his career totals, 12,914 points for his career. Going to Kerry Kittles. Kerry Kittles just made an all-rookie team. He played for three different teams. Actually, he only played for two teams. He only, he only played seven career seasons. 14-point uh, career score. He only scored 7,000 points in his career. The most points he scored in a season was actually his second season in 1998, where he averaged 17 points per game. 44% from the field, 41% from three-point range, and a solid 81%, 80% from the free throw line. So he shot – so he had 44-41-80 splits. Um, five rebounds, about th- two assists, uh, 1.7 steals, which is actually not bad, solid. And again, another solid player. He only scored 7,000 points in his career. It probably could have been that he had injuries. He only played 507 career games. 
because uh, they only played 11 games for the Clippers. And I guess and uh, uh, he pretty much retired at that point. So Kerry Kittles really didn't do much uh, in his NBA career. And this is this will tell you that Mike is uh, that dude is just really the coldest man. Yeah, you know what? I've been trying to get uh, my. The funny thing is, my favorite Bulls uniforms are the ones from the second three Pete Jermaine. And I'm trying to, and I was trying to get the striped jerseys, the striped red with the black. Those are my favorites. If you get a Scottie Pippen or an MJ jersey in those, especially, I like that 96, 97 celebrating 50 year anniversary. Man, that's my favorite jersey. That red striped black Chicago Bulls jersey is my absolute favorite. I would do anything to get my hands on that jersey. It's crazy. Smash the like button, hit the subscribe button for the Lewis Sports Network. Again, shout out to everybody in the chat. This video isn't going to be as long. Uh, so it'll be probably anywhere from 30 minutes to about an hour because what I want to do, ladies and gentlemen, is I want to get back to I want to do the Scottie Pippen versus Reggie Miller video. That one's going to be on fire. I want to do a versus and the narratives that have been going on pretty much uh, throughout the documentary. This is the jersey that I need. Huh? Crazy, but he never. Yep, it's crazy. Uh, let me just look in the comments real quick. Yep. So let me see. Wait, 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 wait. What are you talking about? Uh, I never seen how MJ responded to losing. I wish I could have. Uh, me too, Lewis. Got to be on eBay next B day for sure. Actually, there's um. Who are you talking about? At six. Wait, Ryan. What do you mean? Don't say anything. What do you mean? Don't say anything. Says I wouldn't want to be around MJ losing ever. I mean, yeah, that's facts. Give me one second, guys. Give me one second. Talk some amongst yourselves in the chat. I'll be right back real quick. But once again, shout out to everybody in the chat. Again, everybody, uh, smash the like button, hit the subscribe button. For the Lewis Sports Network, it says 18 likes, but it's showing 17 on here. I don't know what's going on. I feel like YouTube is like taking my likes or something. I'm not even, I mean, you know. 
Oh, what I meant is, oh, my, my point is, what I, oh, okay, I see what you mean. I'm a, I mix it up. Okay, I got you. What I meant to say was, is that um, I'll do anything to like buy the jersey. So like, if like, if I can find the jersey, like I'll, you know, I'll get it. That's what I meant to say. So apologize, I apologize for my wording, but I meant to say that I'll do anything to, you know, if I can find the jersey, man, I could definitely, you know, find it. Phone. I had a creepy guy write to me from your phone today. Thanks, bro. All right, no doubt, no doubt. Yeah, what's going on? All right, guys, continue to smash the like button, hit the subscribe, man, on the Lewis Sports Network. Kendall Gill is a cool guy, man. And it's crazy how he could have went one-on-one -on -one with Tony Kukoc, but Kerry Kittle thought he could take MJ on his own. And they go Kendall. I guess this was probably from the last dance and he was telling uh, Dennis Rodman's story. That makes it sound like it's pretty much most likely because it's like, why wouldn't that happen, right? He said, I was just trolling. Oh yeah, I know, I know, I know you were. Uh, does anyone know if Michael Jordan is supposedly doing another documentary at the last dance? I really don't know. It might not be the case, uh, lowly one. Uh, only reason I'm saying that is because since he, since they did a 10 part documentary with this one, I, I, who knows, especially with the fact that Jordan is someone who really didn't want to give pretty one, want to give himself to the media, uh, and to fans because of what he was worried about. And I think the fact that he was worried about what people would perceive him, uh, is probably why he probably wouldn't do another documentary. I, I really don't know, but I will say this lowly one, Kobe Bryant is getting a documentary for the last season, his last season. Uh, he's getting a documentary on that. So at least that's something you can look forward to when it comes to Kobe, at the very least. You know? Uh, so, you know, if it can, definitely got to get that. And like Ron said, man, what's going on with them likes, man? Let's get them likes up, man. No, the jersey that we were talking about, Freddie, was the black and red jersey. This one. Right here. See that Bulls jersey that uh, Jordan is wearing right here? That jersey I'm talking about. See that one? So, Freddie, if you see that one, that's that's what we're talking about. I said that I would try to get that jersey if I could. There's a there's actually a website that you guys need to check out. Uh, I don't know if you guys have heard of it. It's called fanatics.com. If you type in fanatics.com, yeah, they said it in the um, – they, they actually said it during parts five and six of the documentary. Uh, they said that they were going to um, – that Kobe was going to get an honorary, and that's so when they said rest in peace to Kobe, uh, that he was going to get a documentary. ESPN came out with the news. Uh, they came out with the news later uh, that he was going to get a documentary, um, you know, in honor of him, and they were going to do the last season. So we're going to get all of that from the last season. I would have loved to see a, a kind of similar documentary to Kobe just for the fact that I would have loved to see behind the scenes of what happened between him and Shaq and Phil, I think those would have been interesting. That could have, that could have dispelled a lot of media hype as to why the Lakers ended up breaking up, especially with Malone and Gary Payton. I think if they would have did something like that, I think that would have been great. I honestly think that would have been great. Shout out to, uh, to Moko, who was the 19th like, appreciate that. To Moko, I did check out your video. I know you uploaded a video uh, another video, but when I went to go check it out and I tried to like and comment, uh, it disappeared. I don't know what happened to it. Um, uh, hold on. Is that my, uh, my brother has my phone for a second. Uh, he has my phone for a second cause he ordered something. And, uh, so he had to go find out about something. Uh, so when I, when he comes back, I'll be able to hide it. And uh, shout out to Lawrence. He was like, all this love Kobe's getting now. Where was this when he was alive? Exactly. Exactly. Kobe wasn't getting, Kobe, Kobe, he didn't, he didn't get love. That's why I always tell y'all fake love by Drake. Kobe wasn't getting love. They couldn't, they can't, they couldn't stand him. As soon as that, as soon as that rape case happened, he was public enemy number one. Oh, you deleted it to redo it? Oh, okay. Um, but did you, you saw my comment in the other video, right? Yeah, so that's why I'm saying that this Bulls jersey is like my favorite one. I just love the color. Black and red goes with about anything. Uh, got you. All right. 
Raduni, shout out to Raduni. What is up? Smashing that like and hitting that subscribe button. And like I said, once once I get my phone back, I do that. Let me see what Jermaine said because I think I missed his comment. And like I said, shout out to Jermaine. Um, I'm a big fan of MJ and the Bulls fan, and uh, I'm a big MJ and Bulls fan. Probably the biggest, even more than Skip could claim. And Mike is the best I've seen. LeBron can't compare just off intensity and heart, let alone everything else. All right. Um, Kendall going on ISO on Cool Coach could have been promising for real because Cool Coach can't defend Kendall Gill. So when I hear that, I'm like, yo, he really could have. Because that's what it showed. Were you able to call? They, they screwed. They screwed up. We're gonna have to call Black Star. Like I'm surprised that it happened. I didn't get no notification. Or nothing. I'm tight because I lost. All right, ladies and gentlemen, keep smashing that like and keep hitting that subscribe, man. All right, now that I got my phone back, I'm going to put in my uh, PayPal. So uh, let me just copy. Let me just copy real quick. There we go. Let me see if the notification is on here. It looks like it's not. And uh, I just got some news, ladies and gentlemen, that most teams are allowed to reopen again right now. They are allowed to reopen again. Where is, no, where am I, I'm like, where is that YouTube app? There we go. And Layla's got in such a good mood that she's singing the song again. She's, sometimes I feel that he is me. Who's gonna wanna be? The man I know, the dun dun dun, boom 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 boom. Cause like, if I could be like Mike, if I could be like. All right, so I put the, I put the PayPal inside the chat, ladies and gentlemen. So there it is. Again, everybody smashing that like button, hitting that subscribe. Let me just get. Yep, it's all about that. I actually think that the media is back to. Yeah, they are. They are. They are. They are. They are. They're back to that. We already know. Not even close, man. Hit that PayPal or cash out for the homie. Appreciate it, Freddie Gee. Shout out to Freddie Gee. Appreciate that. All right, man. This, this I know. This I know he's the greatest right here, man. That's how you know he's heated. There you go. Layla, do you enjoy that picture of MJ right there? Do you see that? He said, look, that's what greatness looks like, though, folks. He said, that's what greatness looks like. And then I also just found out, ladies and gentlemen, that, uh-oh, that one Mr. Scotty Pippen, which is why I'm going to come up with the Reggie Miller, uh, I'm going to be... Uh, shout out to Lawrence, man. He says, yo, I'm a big supporter. I'm a big supporter of the channel because nowadays people either trolling or just straight up lying to themselves when they talk about sports. Yo, I appreciate it, man. And you know what it is? People just can't get out of their feelings, man. That's what really gets me upset. I don't care if you have a favorite player, but I just hate when people get in their feelings so much. And it's like they, they disrespect all the other greats that played. And then all these lies, all these narratives, all these trolls. It's like, you must something must be something must be really wrong with you that you just decide to troll because you feel like it. But it is what it is, man. Like at the end of the day, like you just said, Lawrence, that's what it is. It's just troll. So they're trolling. Because what they want to do is they want to get a reaction. So again, if somebody comes and tries to troll me, I'm just gonna come back this. Sometimes you feel that you wanna be me. If there's anybody that you wanted to be, I want to be 
I want to be like Lewis Sports Network. I want to be, I want to be Lewis Sports Network. Exactly. So come on, dog. We talk, we talk, we, 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 we talk about greatness. Not a game, not a game. We talking about greatness here on the Lewis Sports Network. Like I said, man, I appreciate everybody, man. Uh, uh, Ticket TV last so itself that uh, Fury cheated uh, to be Wilder. His b-ball talk is accurate, though. All right. Oh, you know what's so funny? I, you know what's so funny? Six for two hundred. I kept telling my, I kept telling people that uh, Tyson Fury. In my, I know people are getting upset about Deontay Wilder uh, losing, and they felt like they got cheated. And I said Tyson Fury being a fair and square, and I said Tyson's always been the better boxer. I said Deontay's really never worked on his skill set, but you know get mad about that too because he's the bronze bomber he's got that, that devastating right hand and i'm telling you the man does not work on his craft he's got a great punching right hand and he's got devastating power take don't i can't take that away from him you know where he's come from you know i appreciate it dog but it's like yo like yo keep it a hundo he's he ain't better than fury but boom 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 i'm sorry it's just not it after Kobe, they wanted to make him the logo and everything. Oh, that, so, l- listen, Ron, I'm going to tell you right now. That's a lie, too. That's a lie, too. You know why they wanted to make him the logo? So they can make money off of him. Sorry. It's the truth. You want to know the truth? Look at it this way. Why do you think Jerry West is the logo? And Jerry West to this day says he has not been paid. The league is making money off of the logo, Mr. Jerry West. They would have been doing the same thing to Kobe. And he's no longer with us. God rest his soul to him, Gigi, and the seven other victims in that horrific crash. But they were going to make money off of Kobe. That's the, re- that's the reason why I, at first I was like, man, they got to make him the logo. But then I thought about it more deeper. Look how much disrespect they did to Kobe. They renamed the all-star MVP after him. I'm like, I get it, it's competition, but I'm like, look what the All-Star game has become. Look what the All-Star game has become. They relegated to the great Kobe to the point where they named an All-Star MVP after him? Yeah. No, thanks. I'll take a pass. No, thanks. You you, you, you could keep that. But, they, but now it's the All-Star MVP is the Kobe Bryant Award because the NBA Finals MVP is named after Bill Russell. So unfortunately, that's the way it works. And like I said, man, welcome to the community, Lawrence. I appreciate that, man. And like I said, guys, make sure others know about the channel. Jermaine, Lawrence, it's yeah, truly appreciate you guys. Um, you guys are great. Keep up the great content, Lou. Appreciate that. Appreciate it. Like I said, I appreciate Wilder, no doubt, man. But it's like, again, they need to stop with the stop with the narratives, man. I, I'm, I'm sorry, like I said, man. When it comes to Deontay Wilder, like I said, great right hand, great power, but he got out class and he got out boxed by Fury. Sorry, I'm sorry. It's, it's just, listen, man. I went to, um, I went to Frames. I went to Frames on 40th Street and 9th Ave. I went into a small bar and I saw that fight. And what I saw was Deontay Wilder getting exposed and get dominated by Tyson Fury. That's what I saw. But now it's becoming a lot of these conspiracy theories and, you know, what happened, you know, what was in Tyson Fury's glove and all that. Like, it, it went crazy far, man. Everybody in the chat, whether we agree or disagree, we're real ones in here. Y'all guys, y'all, y'all real ones. Uh, Should have been came in the chat zone, big homie. It stayed live up in here. I told you. Listen, I mean, it'd be a house party in here. Oh, he did. He did. He did. He did. <laughs> Yo, shout out to Reduni, man. He said, I don't want to be like Mike. I want to be like Reduni. Uh, that's right, man. Facts. Facts. Shout out Good Fives. Stop. I'm about to drop some bombs around here even. Uh-oh, bomb bombs. While they're going bounce back, bomb squad. Yo, hopefully Deontay works on his... um. Works on his footwork, and that dude works on his skill set. Because when he does that, definitely will be that man. And that's why I said that when I they need to miss me with that. Ain't that right? 
Yeah, I'm just saying that was actually said crazy. Yep. And that's why I said that Kobe being the logo, they were just gonna make money off of him. And think, and he's not even he's not even alive to, you know, to say, oh Kobe, what are your thoughts about you um being the logo of the NBA? Instead of the NBA, it would have been the KBA, the Kobe Bryant Association, where Black Mamba comes in and it's about that mama mentality. But no, they wasn't going to do that. No way. No. The NBA was just trying to get Kobe fans excited, but that wasn't going to happen. I already know. And again, it, it, it goes back to what Layla was talking about. Why do you think people still bring up that rape trial, even if Kobe's passed away? Notice that? They still, dudes who, don't, who can't stand Kobe, they'll still bring that up because... It's funny, Kobe's a family man now. He has four daughters. He has a beautiful, loving wife. You know, he's been he's been empowering females for all he'll ever be known for. That's what happened. That's all he'll be known for. It's ridiculous, right? It's amazing to me, like how they how they do that to, to one Kobe Bean. Duck and cover, here I come dropping them bombs. Uh oh, they look, shout out to Slide, by the way. To this day, Wilder's gonna bounce back, but he needs to work on his fundamentals. Exactly, that's all it is, man. That's all it is. Uh, Slide says I didn't know who Nipsey was until he died. To be honest with you, I only knew Nipsey a little bit. I ain't know Nipsey too much. All right, so I did that. Hold on a second. All right, guys, continue to smash the like, hit that subscribe. I'm coming back with the Scotty Pippen versus Reggie Miller video. I want everybody to pull up in here. And like I said, Jermaine and Lawrence, y'all know anybody who's on YouTube, tell them to come check out this channel, man, and uh, help. You know, help like and subscribe and uh, obviously show support. And, uh, you know, I appreciate it, man, because there's a lot of dudes who, you know, they've been on here and they're like, you you know, you obviously don't even know what you're talking about and all this kind of stuff. I said, yeah, that's fine. That's cool. OK, so Ryan says, where are you going to rank LeBron if he wins finals MVP this year? Well, I'm going to say this. If LeBron wins finals MVP and he wins another NBA championship, that puts him at four and six. Uh, let's see. Where can I rank LeBron? He would, for me, me personally, me personally, LeBron cannot move up into the top five no matter what. He can't. He cannot. He cannot move to the top five for me. It's just not going to happen with me. Where I can move him is anywhere from six to ten. The highest he can go is six. The highest he can go is six. What about Draymond and Shaq? What do you mean by Draymond and Shaq? Are you talking about uh, Shaq talking about how he'll destroy the Warriors uh, if the Lakers play, and then Draymond's talking about how the Warriors will destroy them? Wilder needs to watch Larry Holmes. That's a good guy to learn from. Freddie Gee, I know I just usually catch the videos after the fact that I love these GOAT debates, even though they're pointless to me. They're, they're, to be honest with you, they really are pointless. But again, the media is the reason why us fans are continuing to debate. I mean, if I want, I mean, obviously they give content to people about it um, in terms of the top 10. Everybody's top 10 is different. It's all subjective. So it is what it is, man. Deontay needs to do a better job of working the body. I agree with that. I feel like he doesn't do enough body shots. Yeah, he'll, he'll start with, he'll try to do his feints to try to set up his, uh, set up his, like I said, Wilder has a very good jab. When it comes to his jabs, I have to give him credit on that. He's fundamentally sound with his jabs. It's when he starts to get into his power is where I question his ability with his skills. He lacks skills when it comes to – he starts to swing wild. And then if you look at his footwork, it's – his footwork is – he's got to work on his footwork. And again, jabs, more body shots, man. He just doesn't really have a skill set. No, I'm sorry. Tyson Fury smacked that. Oh, no, he did. He did. And again, shout out to Ryan Powers. Uh, 
and figure out a combination that he could throw if he can't drop his opponent off a of one-two. Exactly. Um, yeah, I, I agree. I agree. The thing with Deontay is he really needs to start learning how to wear opponents down instead of trying to just go for the knockout. And the thing is, he's, he has the ability to be patient. He has the ability to be patient. Well, yeah, he got his ass whooped. I didn't know who Nipsey was either, to be honest. That's why with some of these dudes, I'm saying to myself, man, like, you know, they're acting like, why they need to watch Prime Riddick? Oh, that's who I was thinking about. Riddick, Big Daddy Bo. Big Daddy Bo. It's, a, it's, it's, it's crazy how short his career was, but he was one of the he was one of the best boxers, one of the best heavyweights of his time. And at one point, he was the best heavyweight in the damn division. Riddick Bo, Riddick, Riddick Big Daddy Bo was one of the best heavyweights in my – it's crazy. He was at one time the best heavyweight in the division in the mid-'90s. Riddick Bo, Riddick Bo, that dude, that dude, man, I loved, I loved his, I loved, uh, I was actually watching the other day, um, his fight with, um, with Holyfield, one of the best fights I've ever seen. Uh, keep speaking on Kendall Dill. Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, so Kendall Gill, uh, obviously a Chicago native, uh, you know, he went to, he went to high school in Illinois. Uh, he was basically upset at Kerry Kittles for messing up that last play. Uh, he felt that Kerry Kittles didn't have the talent to go one-on-one -on -one to challenge Michael Jordan. And then when you look at Kerry Kittles' career, like I said, he was really somebody who was – he was good on the set shot. He wasn't really somebody who put the ball on the floor. Uh, he was solid running the fast break, but it wasn't that serious. I know that in transition when he played with Jason Kidd, uh, he definitely would shoot pull-up jump shots in transition. But uh, Kendall Gill was a very solid defender. Uh, unfortunately for Kendall Gill, he was on that Seattle Supersonics team that uh, that lost in the first round and got upset to the Denver Nuggets uh, in five games. And the, the Sonics, that, and it's funny, they were one of those other teams uh, that lost, winning 63 games. They had the best record in the NBA that year, ladies and gentlemen. But they lost in five to the Kembe and the Sonics, I mean, and the uh, Nuggets who ended up pushing the Utah Jazz in the next round to seven games themselves. So they went, I mean, they had, it's funny, Robert Pack is a guy that nobody really talks about a lot, but he was a very good player in the 90s. Uh, I believe he was a combo guard. I think he played point guard, and I think he played shooting guard. I think he played both positions, uh, Robert Pack. Uh, they had LaFonso Ellis, who obviously now is in, um, he's with college game day and college basketball, um, but you know, at that time period, you know, it was great. Uh, but Kendall Gill was a very, very solid defender. Very solid defender, good NBA player. And like I said, he led the league in steals one time. Um, they do. That's very true. 23, 23 likes is a sign. <laughs> MJ. Four and six is top five. He'd be the only exception, Layla. Come on now. Like I said, if Will Chamberlain ain't top, if Will Chamberlain ain't at the top, and look how they talk about Will. He has another super team he's supposed to win. If he lose, where do you rank him? 12 to 18? LeBron's not, LeBron's not moving anywhere out of my top 10. LeBron, LeBron is done in terms of top five. That, uh, that's done. That's done. I think I heard of Sergio Oliva. Yeah, Michael. Jo yeah, yeah, LeBron. Yep. Because because look look at it this way, Layla. The problem is Will Chamberlain and LeBron are the only two top ten greats on my list with losing finals records. The other eight players that are ahead of those two, they have they've won more. And like, like I said. If LeBron is going to have a six finals record and be in the top five, then we got to put Jerry West as a top five player too. And he's one in eight. And the difference between LeBron and Jerry West is LeBron had free agency. Jerry West did not. And that's not Jerry West's fault. And look, it's kind of the same thing we say for Bill Russell. Bill Russell got to be on, what, stack teams because there was no free agency neither. 
and it was in an A team league. So the teams were stacked. That's what that means. If it's an A team league, the teams were stacked. But people have sent uh, unathletic white guys that he pretty much went up against. And it's like, if that's the case, that would also mean for Will Chamberlain, right? Yeah, I know I'm better than Draymond. I never hear one track from Nips. I've heard a couple. Draymond is top 150. Besides MJ, Kareem, Kobe, and Magic, who is better than LeBron? Larry Bird. Larry Bird is better than LeBron James. I'll be nice and put Draymond at 149th. <laughs> right, Wilder has a good jab, but he needs some type of combination. Bad. Like I said, um, in terms of his, uh, in terms of Wilder's um, fundamentals with his jab, he's very good. But you need a combination with that because, again, if they take away your right hand, what else can you go to? You're predictable. You're going to lose the fight, man. You're going to lose the fight. You're going to make yourself. I know I created the narrative. I know that his stats and records are longevity based as well, but his impact can't be denied. Well, that's why he's in the top 10. His impact. That's what I'm saying. His impact. LeBron been out of the go combo, in my opinion. He's great, but like you said, Lou, he threw six. He's six through 10, not to three or five on my list. LeBron is six to 10 at best. That's it. I know I'm better than Draymond, for real. Layla, his impact didn't get him results without forming super teams. 11 others' impact was greater, in my personal opinion. Hakeem is so overhyped, but Tim does, but Tim does have six. The reason that Hakeem, Hakeem, like I said, Hakeem is really the one player in NBA history. When you compare to all of these great players, he won a championship really with no all-stars. If you look at Shaq, if you look at Duncan, if you look at Magic, Kareem, Michael, Larry Bird, right, LeBron, Hakeem is really the only person to win a championship without zero All-Stars. Well, if you want to count Michael Jordan as well, because he did it in 1998 and 1991, because Scottie Pippen was not an All-Star in 91. He was in 90. Uh, and in 98, he missed 35 games. And obviously, when you miss that many games, you're not going to make no damn All-Star team, no matter what, unless the NBA decides to uh, mess with stuff and have him get in as, you know, getting in for reputation. You know, that's what they would do, right? Uh, Bird, I agree. But Wilt, come on. He was playing against 50 white guys. Wilt couldn't help that. No, nah, and it's the same thing with Bill Russell. LeBron been out of the goat. What? Overhyped? Nah, I can't agree with you, sister. Don't hate the player. Hate the game, and that's bars. Facts. It's not to control the tempo because you just can't knock out every opponent. Yep, that's a good point. Really? Not, damn, Fly didn't know that. Oh, you know I came with the gloves when it came with the brown, brown, with the brown bashing. Ha <laughs> ha. You know what it is. Uh, let's see. In his prime. No one had to go against the Warriors. Oh, here we go with that. Here we go with that Warriors narrative again. That's the thing that history will murder him for. The super teams and the losing finals records were super teams. The problem is they're acting like if it never happened, and that's not true, man. Lewis, you see Channing Fry trending? Yeah, but I don't pay attention to Channing Fry. You know why, Anthony L? Because Again, he played with LeBron, so of course he's going to be on that on that ghost status. And again, Channing Fry has a podcast due to this guy. Why is he on TV? Because of LeBron. He played with him. So I'm, I'm not going to pay no mind to Channing Fry. Channing Fry may come out and say bronze a go, but it's like at least he's not one that's coming out and just talking and talking and talking with guys like Damon Jones and Richard Jefferson and, you know, all of his friends that are in the media. Uh, and then obviously the people on his own show. So uh, Channing Fry, he, he don't bother me with that. Championship or not, I still have to put Larry over LeBron. LeBron did it. That's what I said. Again, you can make the case with LeBron being the greatest small forward. The problem is with Larry, he did that in less time. That's why I have him over him. That's the reason why. 
That's my issue with LeBron. He's great, but he gets a lot of excuses. And the problem is the media, they're the reason why people be bashing him. It's not just it's not just people who just can't stand LeBron. It's the dudes who just be straight up bashing him like that. You're not putting things into context, Ryan. LeBron is still playing, and LeBron has the longevity factor ahead of Larry Bird. If we put them peak for peak, so let's take Larry's 10 best years against LeBron's 10 best years. Can make the case. And again, here's another thing you got to understand. Larry Bird averaged 10 rebounds for his career in nine full seasons. LeBron James' highest rebound total, I believe, is eight. Eight and a half, I believe. Something like that. 84 Bernard King or 2009 LeBron James? 2009 LeBron James because Bernard King was not a defender. Bernard King was an elite scorer, yes, but LeBron was a two-way player, so he could score and he could defend. So I got to choose 09 LeBron over 84 Bernard King. It's funny because that's Carmelo's favorite player, Bernard King. Don't be disrespectful like that. I know, but once these fair weather fans move to Zion, history will murder his spot. I never in my life thought I would see Kobe out of the top 10. I'm telling you, these dudes in these networks, they never had Kobe as a top 10 player since he passed away and this immortalization has happened. Now they're saying he's top 10 all of a sudden. And now all of these all of these writers are writing these nice things about Kobe. That energy wasn't kept when he was alive. That's why I'm not buying. I'm not even buying Kobe as a top 10 player for that reason, because it's all fake. Trust me, to me, the media is done giving Kobe his praise. There were a lot of dudes in, on YouTube. They were like, I'm so sick and tired of these dudes talking about Kobe. Kobe, that's ESPN's apology for treating him the way that they did, you know, during his career. Uh, Jerry Rice and Baylor also didn't have the ability to create their own rosters like LBJ neither. Facts, Lawrence, every time he loses, Braun gets so many passes. I'd rather have what's going on. Uh, I keep missing a lot of comments, man. It just because when I get into it. Yeah, that's what it is too, man. Bernard King was that dude, man. No, he was. He was. He was. Uh, but again, as a score, though, no disrespect, but LeBron's three and six could have easily been one and eight, man, just like Jerry West. And it's like I said before. If people are celebrating him so much with a three and six record, again, you then you got to put Jerry West in the top five, and he didn't have control of his of his opportunity to go to another team to win like he did. And like I said, that's that's not fault of either guy, but whatever. I mean, Channing Fry's a follower, so I'm not even gonna bother. The Warriors are not an unbeatable team. That, that that again, that that's that's too much hype. You're falling too much for that hype, man. Ryan, you really put in Draymond on the level of Kevin Durant, Klay Thompson, and Steph Curry. Come on, dude. Stop, Ryan. I, I love you, bro, but <laughs> come on, dog. No, he's not on that. No. Draymond couldn't even average 20 and 10 like he promised on a bad team, so I don't want to hear that. Draymond's not at that level. I'm sorry. No way. A great team, but plus, Rob Parker, the only one I heard that called LeBron out that Christmas game against the Clippers when he was supposed to have pulled his groin again but you failing out all over Kevin Hart's lap. I remember that. Larry Bird was pure IQ technique and trust. That's facts. LeBrick exposed himself live saying Jefferson not getting fired. Channing Fry said Jordan only. Uh... Ryan, where are you getting your stats from? LeBron never averaged nine rebounds in no, in no season. No, it's 10. It's a flat 10, my friend. Look up the stats. It's 10. Jenny Fry said Jordan only had one job, which was to score. Shaking my head. He's trying to say Jordan was one-dimensional. LeBron probably told him to say that. <laughs> and James Harden took the voice to seven games, man. LeBron got... And that longevity of LBJ can be argued, if you know what I mean. Exactly six foot 200. 200. Ryan, I, I noticed you come with a lot of narratives, bro. You got to look into those contexts of things. LeBron had a much better team the first half of 2018 compared to the second half. He decided, remember, look, 
the, the, you have to look at it this way. Why do you think that he ended up leaving to Los Angeles? And I'm going to ask you this question, Ryan. Why did LeBron go back if he knew that that organization was not good, especially knowing that the owner of the team accused him of quitting while he was in Cleveland? Nope. And I ask people this question all the time and nobody comes at me. Nobody comes to me with this answer. man. Nobody comes at me with this answer. They never do. Nope. Uh, Kobe at five. That's cool. I know you got LeBron at what, number two or number three? Again, it's your list. G-Money, you can't, I mean, maybe he sounds like, but we can't just keep assuming that he is one. I mean, you swear, you swear everybody that disagree with you is a broad side. <laughs> I'm not getting emotional. You just make too many, too many excuses when he loses. Uh huh. The Kobe haters commercial, the media out of today is the Kobe haters in the commercial. True that. Uh, Ryan is a LeBron groupie. Yeah, Draymond got exposed, man. Draymond got exposed. That's why people were saying, oh, he, he had to go against Steph and, and Clay and, and Kevin and Draymond. Draymond was averaging a triple single all season and games that he could have played, he chose to sit out. Come on, man. And like I said, I like the Warriors, man. So, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, he said, yo, Ryan, you making this Ryan look bad, man. Yeah, but Freddie and Ryan are clearly... Nah, G Money. No, 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 no. G Money. No, no, no. I'm gonna stop you right there. Stop, 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 stop. They're not. They're not. Those, those two are not Ross sexuals. Freddie Gee, he's had his moment. He has his moments where he criticizes Braun too. I'm not. I'm not gonna say that. And even Freddie Gee said it too. He says if LeBron doesn't win the title this year, that it's on him. Freddie has said that, and he's been consistent. No, he just gets upset when people are acting like if he can just do no wrong, no matter what. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, Ryan. Uh, Ryan P. Those games were close, but that's the pro that's the problem. The games were close, and they. I'm not saying that they were going to win the series. I'm just saying that they would have made it more competitive. But the problem is, an excuse was always in the making already. And the thing is, Ryan, this is why you got Ryan P. You got to watch the media. You got to if you listen to what they say, they give subliminals. When you really listen and pay attention to what they're saying. This is why I did another video just a couple of days ago and everybody in the chat knows it. It's called Power of the Media. If you watch that video and you listen to what everybody was saying in the comment section and what I was telling you, you will, you will fully understand. It doesn't take away from LeBron's greatness. It doesn't. The 2016 Warriors were inflated for deflation. Again, the 2016 Warriors were great by record. They were great by record. They had a great regular season. Shout out to Corey, Corey in the building. Wait, why y'all block? Why y'all blocking Freddie for? Yeah, y'all funny, man. This dude won't leave my name, man. Stop. Okay. <laughs> I like the Warriors, man, but their basketball IQ is pretty low compared to the Bulls. I've been saying that for the longest, man. They have great basketball IQ, but it's not on the level of Chicago. To win a championship for his legacy. I mean, they definitely got to do that, man. Kobe is a top five, but, oh, I think he meant by any objective measure. I'm literally not even arguing, but somehow I'm a, yo, y'all got issues, man. You didn't hear it from me. See what I mean? That you can't keep right. <laughs> yeah, mods don't attack all the mods, right? That's what I'm talking about. Okay, man, I'm just... G money, man. Sometimes you do get a little too emotional about it, and it's like it's really not that big of a deal, honestly. It's really not that big of a deal. I mean, when I say he's three and six, I'm like, I'm just gonna go. He's three and six. I said, does it take away from him being top ten player? Nope. I said, but he's six to ten. But that's it. That dude had his opportunity to be top five. He blew it. Even if he listen, even if the thing is, oh, you got y'all got to remember this too, man. The Lakers still have a little bit of uncertainty because. With Anthony Davis, I'm not saying that he's leaving, but the thing is, 
he should have took advantage of signing an extension. And the thing is, he's still trying to figure out where he goes. Imagine if he pulls something off and then he ends up leaving. What's going to happen to the Lakers now? And remember, there's rumors. I don't know if it's true or not. I, I, I doubt that's true. But then it's like, if LeBron does it, then I'm like, why are you stooping yourself to this level going to the to the New York Knicks? Like, they really don't have anything going on over there. But there's rumors saying that LeBron possibly might go to the New York Knicks. I don't think he would take AD with him, though. I, I just, I don't know if I can see, I don't know if I see that happen. If it happens, it happens, but I don't, I don't see it. I just don't. Like, I, I, let's say, it's like, look, man, it's like we make our points, but we make it, it's like, you don't need to go that far, man. It really, it's really like, he said, apologize and squash it. <laughs> Uh, MJ, Freddie said MJ's the GOAT. G Money, a broad sexual will never say that. I mean, look at it this way, G Money. Freddie said that MJ's the GOAT, but he says he doesn't feel like what MJ does is that impressive of what LeBron is doing, but he still has MJ as number one. He's just not that impressed by MJ. That's that's all it is. He's he said that MJ, you know, he he, you know, he MJ is he works hard at his craft. He be mentioned that, he's mentioned that many times. I mean some of y'all, y'all got y'all to gotta really listen to each other, man. 24 likes. G-Money, you, because you call me, I'm a bronze sexual, and I'm not even in the conversation yet. You're still arguing about him, man. That, that's hating, bro. Bottom line. Inflated for the deflation. I like, I like, I like how Sly said that. Yeah, that, that, that was smooth, though. That was smooth. That's smooth. Damn, five. Nah, forget it. Nah, G Money. It's not even if you say so. It's the truth. No, it's the truth, bro. It's the truth. There was no need for that, really. Yo, nobody. Listen, nobody block anybody. Nobody block anybody up in here, man. Nobody block anybody in here. If it's obviously a troll who's coming in disrespectful, yeah, but nobody block anybody here. The '96 Bulls would have beat Golden State in five or six. Exactly. Exactly. That's what nobody wants to. That's what nobody. That's what nobody wants to understand, too, though. The league caught up to this team. That's why I don't consider them that crazy great. Like people are saying, man. I'm like 10 seconds behind. Ra. I just noticed that. Damn. Bird Jr., man, don't do that. Beta Mills speak on. He let his emotions run him. Uh oh. LBJ moves again. He's definitely out of my top 10. Smash the like. Hit the subscribe. Imagine AD and LeBron going to the Knicks. LeBron, the ring chaser. I dream, I move. I dream, I grew. Sometimes I feel that he is me. Yes, he used to have hair. Yes. Here's the thing also that LeBron doesn't want. You're going to go from the L.A. media who really don't care about your past accomplishments, but then you're going to go to the New York media. They're even worse. And that's why Kyrie, Kyrie and KD, they better be careful. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> Those two sensitive ass dudes better be careful. Y'all need to try Jetty Kush, man, and chill out and eat up all the nachos together. We need peace and love. Thank you, sir. I could use that right now, as a matter of fact. G Money be arguing to argue, man. I love you, G Money. For real. For reals. For reals. It's a lot of facts. I need some of that while I'm on that deuce. Yo, Freddie got the deuce? Damn, I had a bad story on the deuce, man. This was, this was when I was in Atlantic City. This was, uh, this was what, three years ago? Yeah, man, I stand. I remember, what did I do? I, I think I brought all of my games. I, I, had, I had my trouble. I had my Cards Against Humanities. I had my Sorry. I had my Jenga. I had like about six games. I had the Uno cards, you know, where you be losing relationships and friendships. Yeah, that, that it'd be that type of And uh, I remember I had a couple shots of Duce, man. Whew. 
That was a fun night. A uh, fun night. I think it was for a three day weekend too. Sometimes Atlantic City, sometimes it got you make you feeling like you're in Vegas, even though it's obviously different. And I've been to both. I think the Magic and the Supersonics would have given Golden State a run for their money, in my personal opinion. Again, Gary Payton can guard Curry 94 feet. The only thing is, though, if they make the adjustment and they start to space the floor, it'd be a little more difficult to guard. But again, the defense is crazy. And then who's going to guard young Shaq? And then you got Penny Hardaway, who's got the size advantage on Curry. The Warriors are an all-time great team, but there's no such thing as an unbeatable team. Can we all just get along? Rodney King? Oh, damn. My man went Rodney King up in here, man. Oh, man. Y'all think Dame is better than the best? Y'all think Dame better, the best point this year? You talking about Dame Lillard? I don't know, man. He should have. I mean, he could have did it in 2010. <laughs> Let's stop this wrench on wrench violence. Yo, facts. <laughs> or as Will Smith will say, yo, we got to stop these black on black crimes, man. <laughs> Scottie Pippen isn't that good. Ryan, what are you talking about? Scotty, one of the best two-way players in NBA history. The best defensive small forward ever to play the game. What do you mean he wasn't that good? What? I'm going to call you Mellow if you don't mind. Oh, the Mellow man? Dead it and move on. Yes, G Money's my guy, man. He's a hater, but I don't judge him. He keeps on my toes. You know what? Sometimes you need people like that, man, just to make you stronger, man. Just to keep you mentally sharp. I mean, because sometimes when you kind of get on that, um, you know what, Ryan? I'm going to be honest with you. You know what? Defensively, Scotty was a beast. I think Scotty's issue is really more so crunch time and leadership. That's really more so it. That's where he's kind of overrated, in my personal opinion. It's no, and there's no hate to Scotty. I'm in the A who's down south. We got to collaborate on a sports show. Share the stream, people. I'm good as long as he don't have me. I'm cool, man. LBJ moves to New York, allegedly gets his penthouse spray painted with the beat. Oh, chill. Yo, for real. Nah, chill. If he, yo, if he does that or somebody from his team, it's a wrap. Because you notice they never brought that stuff up. They've never brought that back up. Oh, Sean Kemp, that's facts. Yeah, slide from the A, slide from the A, Freddie. Exactly. I agree with you, Powell. Scotty was scrubbing. They don't want to understand that. I heard Scotty's actually pretty pissed at MJ for this documentary. I heard he's pissed about it. I heard Scotty's pissed at him about it. Death left shrimp. He was he was good. We chat together, we stream together, family for life. I like that. Uh who listened to the Will remix? See, this is where two broad fans disagree. Y'all write down because people swear we're on the same narrative. Scotty was the truth. Wasn't the most natural score. Freddie Gee, NOLA, Origins, GA Rays. Nice. And uh, I think his leadership style was different from MJ's. More of a glue type of person. No, Scotty Pippen, in terms, of, uh, in terms of from a team standpoint, he was very easy to talk to. He was somebody who brought the team together. He was good in that aspect. Scotty's issue was crunch time. That was his issue. That's where his leadership faltered. And that's when that uh, really hurt. <laughs> they never found that dude. Out. No, they didn't. And then you got to ask yourself, who was that person who sprayed it? My thing is, how was they able to wipe the evidence off, too? They don't want they don't ever want to talk about that. Man. I'm from the BK. Oh, shoot. That's what's up. That's what's up, bro. Um, From the Magnolia, huh? That's where it's at from the GA. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop this stream real quick. Uh, I'm going to end it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back in about an hour. Make sure y'all pull up for that one. We're doing Scotty Pippen versus Reggie Miller, especially because with the way that things are going on between those two players, and for what I've been hearing about Scotty Pippen, that joint is on fire. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the stream. Uh, I'm going to put the PayPal in. You guys want to donate, of course, and we're going to come back and do this uh, at 1030. Make sure y'all pull up and come through for that Lewis Sports Network, man, coming back with that heat and that fire. You already know what it is. Shout out to He Knows the Sport. I just know I took his line right there. But again, 
If y'all want to donate, there's the PayPal. The Cash App is in the, is in the description right there on the ticker. Let me just read the comments real quick before I close real quick. Lawrence Ford from Brooklyn. Y'all lingo so funny in NY. Y'all dudes have me weak. MJ wouldn't have won anything without Scotty, and Scotty wouldn't be a Hall of Famer or top 50 player without MJ. Absolutely. I think by the time I write this, you guys might be gone. <laughs> the lowly one. I'll see y'all on the other one. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm about to put I'm about to put a major work on that one. Everybody needs to pull up for that one. Smash the like, hit that subscribe. I really appreciate you guys coming through. And like I said, man, bless up. Live, laugh, love. Come back on the next one. And we're definitely going to pull up for that one. So this one's going to be at 1030. I'm about to make the thumbnail and get ready for that one. All right. So make sure y'all pull up for that one. Scotty versus Reggie. That one's going to be a lit. It's going to be another banger. So like the video, share the video, hit the subscribe, share it on your. As what? Share it on your what? Make sure to share it on your social media outlets and on Reddit. Live, laugh, love. Thank y'all for watching. Take care, everybody. And I'll see y'all at 1030. Jimmy Buckets is a damn good player, man.